All right, welcome to On Set. Well, I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton. We are live on the internet. That's why I had to talk really loud. They're far away. So, <laughs> here in New York City, <laughs> I'm here with, uh, with uh, Seth on the Mighty Mix. You just lost five people. Five people gone. And Cadence. We'll, we'll bring them back with Cadence. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about mixing light. So, this is one of those uh, kind of topics that you, know, you start shooting, you get your flash, you're working with it. Now we kind of want to know how to blend the flash with other stuff. This demo used to be strictly for the event guys, right? You do events, you need to know how to do this. But now with so many great LEDs, especially available that we can use with color changing and everything else, it makes sense for us to mix this into our flash workflow because it's just easier, right? Not that we don't use gels. Gels are fantastic on flash. There's reason to only use flash, but this is so what I'm primarily going to do today is work with flash and we're going to mix in some color changing or RGBW, RGBBW, whatever they want to call them these days, uh, LEDs, it, 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 throw some color in. That's what we're going to do. I'll talk about how to balance them, how to make it work. And if you have questions, let me know. Did I do everything else? That's it. Okay, we're good. All right. So I will start off by saying the gear I'm using that I will forget after this. This is an Icon Z6 II with a 24 to 120 lens. Uh, where this is a, a Manfrotto tripod. We're using Profoto lights. That's all you need to know. All right. If you have a qu gear question, just ask. So let's start off with the basics, uh, as always, because I have to make this last. So we're <laughs> let's start with flash. Because... <laughs> I don't get out of bed for less than 10,000. Okay, so <laughs> this is a Profoto uh, V10X Plus, and it's a TTL flash, meaning that it's going to work automatically with my camera to give me an exposure. I will explain that in a second. And we're just going to kind of get a base exposure. I'm just going to show you how flash works, then we're going to show you how the, the other one works, and then we'll combine them, right? Easy as that. So if I go a little fast here, this is kind of the basics. If, if, it, if you are new to it, though, and I'm going too fast, please do uh, let me know. Come forward. Thank you. The best thing about being a photographer is people just do stuff when you <laughs> look, look that way, they look. Sometimes I'm just walking down the street, and I'll be like, hey, stand over there. People move. <laughs> they know I'm a photographer, I guess. <laughs> or, or they just think I'm crazy, and they're like, I'm going to get out of the way with that guy. All right. <laughs> All right, so this is a, a pro photo, as I said. It's in a three foot octa. Uh, all right, so, all right, all right, all right. No, back to, back to this, okay. Sorry. All right. I have no idea how to turn this off. Okay. All right, so first we're going to start with no, oh, I don't even have to do that because Nikon has a special thing. If you go, if you go to WPPI, Seth's going to be on the Nikon stage. It's a big uh, accomplishment. I don't need your pity claps. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. All right. So what we want to do first is establish first that none of the ambient light is affecting our shot, right? Just like we always do. So we're going to set our camera at its fastest shutter speed that works with flash. So 200th of a second. I know. I know. High speed sync. That's a different demo. We're going to set our ISO at the lowest in the normal range, 100 in the case of this camera. And then we're going to set our aperture until we get effectively none of the ambient light. So if you happen to be in a place where there's all kinds of video lights on you while you're shooting, it's pretty common for me, but not for everybody. You got to kind of close down a bit. I'm at 7.1 when I press my little button on the back of the camera so I can see the view as my camera sees it. It looks like a black frame. But to confirm, yes? Oh, did you want to do live view? Oh, we can do that. Bonus. Okay, so this is, this is the camera. This is the fake view that, that these uh, mirrorless cameras give you so you can see what you're doing, but this is what the exposure looks like. So if you're ever looking through your camera and you see this, and you don't have a flash, so you take the picture and it looks like that, your settings are wrong. But for us, they're gonna be right. So what we're gonna do is turn the flash off, and we're gonna take a shot. And what we're gonna get, hopefully, is a black frame. There it is, all right. So I like to do the second step. I always shoot tethered. This is capture one, by the way. And what we do is we grab, you can tether into Lightroom, somebody's about to ask that. Uh, we grab the exposure slider, we want to move it up until we start to see some flesh tone, like so right around there. That's uh, 2.38 stops. I like to be about two stops or so underexposed uh, for the black frame. What that basically is doing is setting my shadow levels, right? So 
I know that if, if I'm using my flash uh, and I have dark shadows, you know, they're gonna be two stops dark. I'm not gonna get this light, even though it's a beautiful light that Seth spent a long time setting up. Okay, but usually we're in ugly light spaces. <laughs> it wasn't that long, geez, man. <laughs> it felt like an eternity when he was explaining it to me. All right. <laughs> All right, so I'm in TTL. <laughs> You're old, Dan. All right, uh, yeah, I had to have a little, you know, I had a lot of coffee today. <laughs> so Seth got me all excited after imaging. All right. You all right, felt so, wanted. <laughs> all right, so we're going to take a shot with the flash. In, in, in theory, we're going to get a good exposure. Huh. Well, it's, it's a little hot for my taste, yeah, but uh, sometimes that happens with TTL, and if it does happen to you, then you just got to kind of look at it and go, looks a little bright. The simplest way to deal with this Oh, we do, yeah, put it back on spot meter, maybe. Isn't that what you did the last time? Uh, Let's see. Seth changed my metering last time, and it seemed to work. Uh, what would you say? It's a spot? Okay, spot metering. We're just going to try that. Let's see if it's worked better. Why not, right? Yeah, a little better. Yeah. So we're a bit hot. So the way that you would deal with this, the first, the first thing you should do if your TTL is off is just take another shot. Sometimes it just goofs up. But since we had two consistently hot shots... Wasn't Hot Shots a movie with Charlie Sheen? Uh, uh, what we do is grab our exposure slider and we're going to bring it down until we get, and all I'm looking at is our skin tone because this is what's important for us here, uh, until we get in the tone where we want. So that seems about right. So that's about, uh, let's see, 0.63. So what we can do now is we can either adjust our TTL. Uh, if, we, if, we're move, if we have a subject that's moving around like we're at an event, we might want to leave it in TTL and make an adjustment exposure compensation. Someone's asking what the white balance setting is. Okay, white balance, I'll take care of that one second. Let me just finish my thought. But because we are doing a portrait and she's not moving around and the environment's not changing, I'm just going to switch to manual. Okay. When, you, when you're on a Profoto system and some other systems, when you switch to manual, it tells you what the flash is set at. I can see it's set at 7.5. I'm about half a stop hot, so I'm just going to turn it down to 7. Actually, it was 0.6, so I'm going to say 6.9. White balance. My white balance currently is set at 5,000. That's where I like to set it for... Stuff that's daylight, that's kind of where I normally leave it for this camera. That's where I like it. Seth turned me on to that, and I like it. And now, now we think this unconfirmed, but I think Joe likes it as well. Oh, no, it's confirmed. It's confirmed, sorry. <laughs> right. For whatever reason, it just looks good with this camera. If you like 5600 or 6000 or whatever for your camera, and that's where your skin tones fall, that you like them, then that's good for you. You can have it any way you want. We are not shooting something like a product that needs to be color accurate. And even if we were, I wouldn't rely on the Kelvin setting. I would instead rely on a white balance card to set a custom white balance. Okay, so this is for portraits. What's important is it just has to look good, right? All right, so now we have a, a, a proper exposure. Nice and simple. And just a little soft, but uh, just so uh, you recall, I'm going to get rid of these because they're hot. This is what it looks like with no flash, right? So the gray background, all the light on cadence, that's all this one flash, right? So let's take another shot that's gonna be in focus. Okay. And there we go, because we're in manual, everything's consistent, right? So that's basic, right? Basic flash stuff. Now you're probably saying, well then why do you take an hour to teach this normally? <laughs> no, just kidding. All right, so what we're gonna do, is that sharp now? Oh yeah. Yeah, there we go. Love this <laughs> they always love when you zoom in. Okay, so that's the flash, right? And again, if I'm talking too fast, let me know. If we're dealing with ambient light, we can do it any number of ways. If we're in a space that just has light and we want to shoot, the simplest way to do any of this is to turn the flash off, right? And then we just dial in an exposure. Like, we, we have to think to ourselves, so if I'm doing a portrait, okay, I want to keep my shutter speed, uh, shooting in ambient light, rather, your shutter speed you want to keep at roughly double your, uh, equal to or double, is what I prefer, your focal length. So I'm at 50, so I don't want to lower my shutter more than 100. Now I'm on a tripod, so obviously it's a little different, but just generally speaking for hand holding, I like to keep it double my focal length. Now, of course, there's inbuilt, uh, what do you call it, IBS and stuff. I IBS. <laughs> But this is kind of a general rule. So, and keep in mind that while you might be able to hold your camera at a 50th or a 25th or a 15th of a second, if you're shooting a portrait, they might move. So 
For portraits, I generally try not to go to slower than a 60th of a second, but because I'm in a 50 millimeter lens, I'm gonna go 100th of a second to start with. And then what I can do is I can adjust. I mean, do I care if the background's in focus? No, right? So I can adjust my, oh, you know what I can do? Somebody's yelling about the light meter, which I'm gonna use in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to, I'm gonna show you how most people would get an exposure. All right, so again, this is without the flash. It's black, I'm in a hundredth of a second, 7.1. So I don't care if the background's in focus, so I will just open up. This is f4 lens. You can still see that it's quite dark, right? That's not gonna be acceptable. So now is where we start messing with the ISO. Cameras have tremendously good uh, high ISO capability these days, but I still use the ISO almost always last. Probably a habit for, for me shooting a long time. But I'll bring my ISO up, and what I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bring it up until it starts to look good, right? That's basically where we're at. I'm just using the light in the space, right? So that looks pretty good to me. If I make, oh, that's not gonna look good. If I take a shot without the flash, right, we can see that while the color is a little bit weird and this and that, we see we have an exposure, right? So that's how you would get that exposure. So, but we can't just do those two things separately and expect them to work together. Because when you adjust your ISO, when you adjust your aperture, that will affect your flash exposure and your ambient exposure. That means that when you want to mix the two together, the only thing, the variable that you can use to match them is shutter speed. That's going to be your variable. So if I need to be at a certain exposure, or I want to be in a certain place, I can't start adjusting them for my ambient light once I have my flash set. The only thing I can adjust is my shutter speed. So let's start over. So here's what I'm going to probably have to ask you to turn. How many lights can you turn off and be reasonable? All right. Well, enough that she can be as dark as possible. Okay. Maybe, yeah, that one. Hang on, hang on. You do what you do. Maybe go a little closer to the wall. It might be easy for you to be out of the light. A little closer? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll work with that. All right, so if we have cadence here, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the, the flash, which means that right now we can see the, this is what we get, right? Oh, we're not looking at it. Okay, what we're gonna, and when we actually gonna take the photo with the mixed light, we're going to probably have to kill all the flash, but just for a second, so sorry online. If we wanna get rid of this light, again, we can do exactly the same way we did before. I'm gonna drop the ISO down, I don't want it to be so high. So there we go. All right, I'm gonna go 400 ISO because that's what the fastest film I ever would use back in the day. <laughs> um, and we'll go 5.6 because Five, is it 5.6 in B there? No, that's not F8. correct. Oh, F8. Well, it's okay. All right. The other thing I'm going to do to kind of give myself a little bit of wiggle room here because we're in a small space and I'm trying to demonstrate something <laughs> is I'm not going to use this giant uh, modifier on my flash because it's going to go everywhere. And it's just going to be half the demo trying to not get it on the wall. So what we're going to do is switch to a smaller modifier. Smaller modifiers are going to give you more control of the light because you can put them closer. You know, because you need to put them closer, I should say, to keep them soft. Closer the light is to the subject, faster the fall off. This is a strip bank with a grid. We talked a lot about this in the last demo, so if you watch the one, yep, sorry, Seth. Well, you're showing stuff in the dark, you know? <laughs> no, no, I know, you can put it back on. You can put it back on when we get this out. Uh, all right. Yeah, all right. Oh, well, that's right, because the cameras have to, all right, so, all right, no, let me do my, so, there we go, look at this. So this is a strip bank. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Actually, it sets. Uh, <laughs> talked a lot about a strip bank last demo with the single light, but basically because it's narrow and because it has a grid, which helps uh, compress where the light goes, we're gonna be able to control this and get it exactly where we want it, because we need our light to be, we want to separate our light sources. So we're gonna take this guy, we're going to go back, put it over here. There's someone asking in the chat, any recommendations on a soft box around 12 inches or similar? Jeez. 12 inches. One foot box? Yeah, there is a, um, There's my, the Shamira makes an extra, extra small, I think, because it's 12 by 16. 
honestly, every brand makes a one foot box to some degree. So yeah. I think it, first check what your resource, like what you're willing to spend budget wise, and then look at your options as far as that goes. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Yeah, one thing you want to consider when you're buying soft boxes, especially if you're not buying, we'll say professional brands for lack of a better way to describe it, you might want to stay within the same brand because a lot of times, well, all the time, whatever modifier you put in front of the light is going to change the color on some level. But most professional brands are consistent. So a Pro Photo Box and a Shamira Box will look pretty similar. Pro Photo Box and a some other box that I won't name any names will not look the same necessarily. They might, but they won't necessarily look the same. And he's kind of referring to temperature. Okay. Color temperature. The color, exactly. the color of the light. That is correct. Color of the light. All right, so we're back here. We're in TTL. Again, my exposure is, yep, you can. Yep. My exposure is that basically. We're gonna take a shot. Oh, I'll take a shot with the flash. Sorry, she was blinking, but I'm just getting a. Oh, no, she wasn't. All right, so we can see it's mostly off the wall. That's okay. I can live with that. Come closer to me, actually, because now he's turning all those lights off. Yeah. We're definitely having an oddball. All right, I'm going to dial in some. Uh, I think he's supposed to do it on the camera, but I'm going to do it here. We'll find out in a second. <laughs> no, that worked. Okay. I dialed in exposure composition in TTL, and that gave us a better exposure. Oh, and Seth changed my thing again. Yeah, okay. All right, so basically we're just having an issue with TTL, give us a bit of a hot shot. So you can see here though that I've got most of the light off the wall. If I have her move even more towards me, okay, let's see if we can get that off the wall. That should be pretty good. I can also go vertical, which would help. All right, I know it's dark in here. Thanks for bearing with me. One more shot. Okay, then you can. There we go. All right. Oh, that's, God, that reminds me of that. Who's that painter? Shut up. <laughs> All right. So we have the wall mostly dark. You can turn the lights back on, Seth. Sorry. Thank you. Um, we have the wall mostly dark. We've got nice light on her, right? A little bit of uh, drama. And that looks pretty good. But now if we want to incorporate some kind of a constant light source, we need to can make a few different considerations. So we'll do it a couple different ways. Even though I said I was going to use a colored light, I'm actually going to use, yeah, I will use it one. I'll use a data light first just because it's right here. This is a data light, data light. Uh, and basically it's a focusable, you can see me, right, with the lights on and everything. Well, oh, no, I don't, they can't see me in the camera. <laughs> this is a focusable spotlight. That's how you can think about it. It's got a, a spherical lens on it, which allows for really precise focusing. They're not cheap, but you can get other focusable lights as well. But this is just the one I have. I'm going to put what's called a slash on the wall just to start with. So we're just going to show you how to get the light balanced and then we'll get some color going. So what we do here is we're going to take our data and if you are using um, a constant light source like this, one thing you're going to want to almost always do, hear that jingle, um, is use it at full power, right? Because constant lights by their nature compared to flash are way, way less powerful. So I'm not even gonna worry about setting different power levels on this right now, I'm just gonna crank it. I'm gonna put it up all the way, okay? This is a bicolor light, so I can go kind of a little bit cooler than daylight, and I can go a little warmer than tungsten, right? So I think cooler is better for Cadence. So we're gonna do that. And then we'll have Cadence step back into her position. And we're just gonna put it on the wall, it's called, you go that, that's a slash. So this is a slash, you see kind of common thing in an interview. We're gonna put that behind her. Now, there's a few ways to do this. I could just do what I already showed you to get the exposure, but then somebody's gonna ask in the comments, wouldn't that be faster with a light meter? Actually, it might be. So, this is a light meter. Anybody that's born like, not, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> These are, the handheld light meter can be super useful for some things. Most of us aren't gonna use them all the time as photographers. We have great meters in our cameras, but when you need precision and certain other things, light meters are fantastic. So this is a Sekonic, this is an older one, but uh, it's the L358, I think the new one's 458 or something, with a touch screen. You can like text your friends and stuff. And which one, what I'm gonna do here, no you can't text your friends, I'm kidding. All right, what you do is you put in your, um, you can do it a few different ways. 
I'm going to put in my, uh, you can leave the light on for a second. It's going to be a second. You can't see my, well, I'm not going to do it yet. I have to see my light meter. So I'm going to put it in my ambient mode. And I'm going to set it in the, uh, there we go, in the f-stop thing. So basically what this does is, okay. Yeah, okay. So, I don't, I don't know how clear that is. Okay, so basically there's f-stop and we have our, uh, we've got our f-stop and we have our ISO. We put those two numbers in and then we're going to read the light and it's going to give us a shutter speed that will give us the proper exposure. Okay? You can do it the other way too, where you put in your shutter speed and your ISO and it will give you the f-stop. I think the new ones can even give you the ISO if you want, but this one can't. So. So we know our ISO is 400, and we know we're shooting at 5.6. So I'll dial those two numbers in, okay? Then I'm gonna ask Seth to turn the lights off. I'm gonna come over here in the light, and I'm going to point it at the light, and I'm gonna press the button. I've got 60th of a second, it says is the proper exposure, okay? So if I, <clears throat> right now I'm at 100th of a second, right? So we can, oh, you can't see it, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna do the live view. So we can see actually that it's a little bit darker because it's not proper. If I go to a 60th, that's gonna give us a proper exposure. Now again, a proper exposure is gray, right? 18% gray. So that's proper, but you know, honestly, 100 wasn't bad. And 100 will, not, will allow me to not have these lights affect my shot. So I'm just gonna leave it there, right? I'm gonna make that choice. I know what the light meter is saying. And Sometimes you just don't do what the light meter says. You do what's in your heart. You're a madman. Stop him, <laughs> someone. <laughs> okay, so will the strobe affect the backlight? Well, if the strobe hits the background, it will, in fact, wash it out a little bit. And we can see that the strobe will hit the background a little bit. So it will have some effect on it, yes. In my... In my uh, my vast experience of shooting this exact shot right now, uh, I'm going to say not much. But we'll, we'll see. But yeah, it'll affect it a little bit. Which is important to know, right? Because we don't just have a slash. We have a slash plus that light on the other side. Is that because mm -hmm. the light in the back is bright enough that that is not as bright? Mm -mm. Is that is a good question because that's not an uncommon thought. So is it because this is so bright that it's not affecting it? That's what you're asking me? Well, you can't over light something. Right. It's, the reason why it's affecting it is because the flash is affecting the wall, right? There's already light on the wall from the flash, so <laughs> this can't make it go away, right? That's why it's doing it. If I angle my light, if I came in with a beauty dish, if I did a different angle, maybe I could get it off the wall, but I really don't want to. I kind of wanted it to blend. But what I will say is this. You can think about the light on the wall as a pattern, and to me, it would make more sense if it was coming down, right? Because how this is lit here. So I'm just gonna change my slash angle. That's it. And I think that will actually work for me. You know, so, you know look at that. It's, this is an advanced slash, right? <laughs> <laughs> you pay extra for this. Oh my God. While he's doing that, you guys in the chat can hit like. It's the only way Daniel feels good about himself. That's true, that's true. And uh, I, I, if, I if you're new here, that. hit subscribe. That's true. And you should subscribe because sometimes Seth comes on too. Not this channel. <laughs> Go subscribe to the other channel. All right. I'm only on here when they got to do new products. Come on. That's right. <laughs> well, sometimes you're on this channel. All right. So I like the slash over here better. I think it just works better for me. But again, you can put it wherever you like. Okay. I just think it makes more sense. I can make it come wherever I want from. Slash is basic. I mean, not the musician. He's probably not basic. He's a nice guy, I'm assuming. Nobody was thinking that. There's lots of cool hats. No one was thinking that. Nobody was thinking. Nope, okay, good. No I didn't one. want to feel like I was disparaging Slash. I like his hats. Uh. Okay. They're asking if, since this is technically two lights, do you get paid more? Yes, because it's two lights, I'm getting paid more. Because uh, you do get paid by the lights. Since I'm doing this, because I just feel like, you can turn the lights on for a second, Seth. Just because I'm, I'm going to now shill a little bit for data light. No, I'm just kidding. So these have become popular, actually, in the flash world, too. Uh, projection units, right? They've been around forever for, for constant lights. This is going to allow us to throw a pattern, right? I have one that goes on the data. You can get them that go on flashes, though. So if you are, if you see this and you're just like, I don't want to buy a constant light for this. You can actually get them. Uh, Adorama, somebody here at Adorama can help you with that. 
there actually is a new projector head for Flashpoint. So you guys can check that out. Yeah. Oh, is that, uh, is that available yet? Uh, it's literally what I have on this shelf right here. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so are those a blinds? Are we in a motel somewhere? Yeah. Wow, I magically transported, Daniel. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what hotels you're in, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we could just, we could put a, a different pattern on here. No, what I was going to actually put, because we were talking about earlier, is color. So I have these little funky colors. Now, distance is going to be your friend here, so it's going to be hard for me to like get the whole background from here. You got a question. I got a question. Shoot. So if you only have two lights, do you prefer the backlight on your subject or on the background? Okay, so that is a fantastic question. So if we think about this, if this light, right, on the background is not touching our subject, okay, that means that, so let's just talk a little flash for a second here. When you're using flash and you remove all the rest of the light from the situation, the, the speed of your flash flashing, the flash duration, is effectively your shutter speed. So even though I'm shooting at a hundredth of a second, if my flash duration is two thousandth of a second, that's effectively my shutter speed, right? So it'll freeze action. So as long as this light and none of this light is touching my subject, I have a very fast shutter speed even though my camera set at 100, right? So do I want to use the flash on the background and the constant light on her? Probably not, because then I got more of a chance to blur her. But when would I want to do that? Shutter drag? Shutter drag, interesting. Anybody else? Okay, if I want the background white, for instance, because when you want the background to be white, you need power, right? How long would I have to drag my shutter to get this tiny little light to make that background white forever, right? Here, I could use my constant light in front and blast the background with the flash and boom, it's white, okay? Think about power and how it's used. You have two different kinds of lights. One is way more powerful than the other. So we think of each feature, why each light is good, what it's used for, and that's the light we choose for the job. I think the question was different. I think they're asking as a creative choice, would you rather put the light on her or on the background as a creative choice? The second light. Like, would you light her from the back or light the background, they're saying? Oh, on her? Yeah, oh. Yeah. oh. Oh, oh, sorry. Like a, like a hair light. Oh. Yeah. Um, you want to roll. I didn't want to, like, break that. No, that's good. Well, that's all, well, well, I thought the other question was, the other question that you didn't ask was better. Uh, <laughs> I mean, whether or not you use a separation light or you light the background comes down to the scene. I wouldn't say one way is better or worse. We're going to do both, actually. So uh, in this case, I like putting it on the background because I was trying to show the dado with the slash and putting it on her hair wouldn't have shown anything, right? Yeah, you told us. So again, now we have this going on, and I can do the same thing, right? I can actually look through here, okay? And I can turn off the flash, effectively. We can see how nice and blue that is, right? And if we see, there's barely, I mean, I can kind of see her a little bit, so I suppose if she was really moving, she might get blurry, but for the most part, I'm gonna shoot with no flash first, so I'll show it to you in a second. And then let's use the flash. And again, it will hit the background, which means it will wash it out a little bit. It's not going to be perfect because we, we're hitting the background with it. But it's pretty good, right? We have that nice blue. If we want all the light off the background, we really just have to tweak our light a lot more. I mean, we can do it. The beauty dish should probably do it easier, but... You want to do it in the dish? Yeah, let's do it. So I'm, yeah, let's do it so we're not killing ourselves. I'm going to switch to the beauty dish because, you know... Because you like using all my stuff? Because I like to use all that stuff. I was going to turn the lights on, but I don't know how. So instead, I'll sand, I'll sand in the light, because Seth doesn't like it when there's nobody in the light. Okay, perfect. I thought you were going to put it on for me. Is a sock in there? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seth is much taller than I am. You want the grid? Yes, please. Thank you, Seth. Uh -huh. All right, so <laughs> I'm switching to the beauty dish more for a functional reason, right? The beauty dish has a tighter grid which is gonna allow me to control the light better. It's also smaller, so I'm gonna move it a little closer. So that's why I'm switching to it, not because beauty dishes are cool or whatever, it's just, it just works better. It's just the right light for the situation. We wanna get all the light off the background so we can get that real intense blue back there. I'm gonna move this, oh, that's fine, you can move it closer. Yeah. <laughs> Even better. Oh look, the subject moves too. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm probably gonna do the modeling light. Yes, you are correct. Okay, so I'm gonna put the modeling light on so I can see where it's falling. And I might have you just go a little this way with your face. Yep, right there. All right, we are in TTL, so we'll see what happens. By putting on the thing where it fades away after. I'm just doing it really low so that you can at least have a focus light. Okay. All right, here we go. Yeah, let's see, it gets a little more intense. Yeah. And you know, you get paid more with a beauty dish. You look like a teen Twilight novel. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's hitting the back a tiny bit over here, but you get the, the gist of it, right? Okay, so basically you can see how much darker it is with the beauty dish. Simple as that. Are you team werewolf or team vampire? What are you? Oh, oh God. No? <laughs> oh, vampire. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right. I know nothing about that. <laughs> You've not seen the posters on my wall. <laughs> All right. Dan is team Edward. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can turn the lights on. Okay. All right. So we get the idea, right? So... If we're using a specialized kind of light, we'd throw a pattern or something that's a constant light, we can mix it with our, with our flash pretty simply, right? The same thing is true if we wanted to mix our light with, let's say, the store, right? Because nobody's ever done this before in an Adorama demo. <laughs> but if, for instance, let's say we're standing here in Adorama, like, and Cadence is right here, and we want to, you're gonna face me. Yeah, and we wanted to get the store in the background, we would do the exact same thing, right? We would look through our camera, Nobody's wearing any shirts that with offensive logos or anything. No. Uh, all right, so we look through our camera, and we can see that we have a beautiful crowd. With, with, you know, again, this is what we got in the store. If we want more detail in the store, again, we can bring our shutter speed down. And as we do, you can see the store is brightening, right? And she's just dark, right? It's not because since barely any of that light is touching her, we're actually good. And now I can just take this light, move it in. Like that. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of the light from here on her face purposefully. It's not overexposed, so I like it. No, no, I like it. All right, I'm gonna focus. Yeah, I like it. I'm using the space around me. If you're in an environment and you want to use the light there, Think about where your subject is standing. If there happens to be beautiful soft boxes with LED lights in the ceiling, you know, put her there for the hair light. And shoot that again. Okay. I'm gonna shoot it again. So I threw some blue in there. There you go. Seth so threw some blue in there. Boom. Right. And we can see how easy is that, right? We're using our environment, we're doing an event, right? or we need to make a portrait of somebody real quick in a hallway, it's some ugly office, right? We can see some fluorescent lights in the ceiling, put them just outside the range of it, it's coming, giving them a nice hair light, right? Hit them with the flash, now we have a hair light for free. You still charge for it, but it doesn't cost us anything. Okay. Uh, thanks for all the kind words in the chat, guys. We appreciate it. Okay, next, let's get, some, let's get funky. Let's use this guy. See, now you got him all revved up. See this? He thinks he's doing good stuff. <laughs> Seth told me I was doing good. Today's my mom's birthday. Is it really? Yep. Happy birthday, Ms. Norton. So she... Uh, What's your present? Dan's going to leave you alone? I, I am her present. <laughs> I, uh, be, being that she was born in leap year, you know, now she's... I think she just turned somewhere like 40. <laughs> so I, she's now younger than I am. <laughs> so... It's a weird situation, but... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, since I said it, let's do it. Let's do a white background, right? Let's do a blown out white background using the flash. Now, this is not the best way to do a white background. Because <laughs> if you blow the background out with a single flash, you're likely gonna get a little bit of flare kickback, but we'll do our best not to get that. You know, we have some standards here. <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right, let me just do a little bit of a cleanup here. If you guys have any questions in the chat, go okay. for it. Dan's going to take forever, trust me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just making some space. This is not a big space. And you got 
250 in the chat and only 111 likes. Do you guys hate him that much? Hey, look, gonna, a thumbs up in the crowd. There we go. Got a right. one in person. Yeah. Dan's putting out a tip jar later. It'll be great. <laughs> you can finally retire. All right. Yes, exactly. Adorama, Adorama gives me two cents per like. So, move <laughs> forward a little bit. And it's in Adorama go, books. Okay. Right to where it says do not stand or whatever that says. Yeah. Move. Yeah. Do not touch that tape. I need it. Yeah. Nobody touch the tape. The tape. Stape. I don't know what that means. Okay. All right. We're going to take this flash. Sans beauty dish. And this is turning into a set demo. I have junk everywhere. That's, you know, that was uncalled <laughs> for. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm here usually alone and doing a lot of things. Some of us actually work, Dan. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I <thought> it was, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. We're going to take this light and we're going to let's get the background white first. <laughs> you get paid in exposure bucks. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. All right. So, at this point, we're going to Yeah, we're going to go back. So, someone in the chat's asking if you're going to put flash on the background with all that power, is it a good time to use a light meter? Actually, I am going to use a light meter. So, that's a good question. I'm gonna, I, I stole this from Gavin, and since everybody likes Gavin, maybe they'll like the video. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to F5.6, 200th of a second. Uh, we'll keep the ISO at 400 because I don't wanna do my shutter speed too slow because again, subject might move because this light's powerful, it's not that powerful. So I'm gonna go here for my base exposure. We'll take a shot. This is gonna be, well, that's a shot of nothing, but that's okay. Okay, that's gray, right, because the flash was on, which I didn't mean for it to be on, and TTL will always try to give you a gray. What we want is white. So there's a couple ways we could do this. The simplest way is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna do two things. This is gonna be, we're gonna say, we're, we wanna shoot a 5.6, right? So first I'm gonna do a TTL exposure. Why? Just because it puts the flash in, in the spot. Now really you should be using two lights for this, so to make the background even, but you know, hey. I'm gonna switch to manual. It's at 3.7. So there's two ways to do it. First, I'll do it without the light meter, then I'll do it with it. Because the background's gray, and I wanna get it to white, it's about three stops. So if I move it up to 6.7, I don't know why I took it off the camera. I got excited. Yeah, you're in some mode today, man. <laughs> the coffee was, it's a little gray around the sides, but we're getting close. What, do you have a power bar? What is this? <laughs> I did, I did have a Snickers. I had sugar for the first time in two years. <laughs> it's true. All right. All right. This is a little tighter than... By the way, for all the people that say these propeller lights are... They, they're too wide. You know, that's why it doesn't fill anything properly. <laughs> like, look how, look how... It's got a nice spread to it. Or too narrow, I should say. This has got a good spread on the wall. It's not quite getting what we want. This is where we get run into some issues here. I said that backwards. The light's actually quite wide. It's not focused, even though it has a flat front. I'm going to one more stop. All right, that's wide enough. All right, so we can actually see a couple of things going on here. We're getting a little bit of, uh, we're probably getting some fringe around our hair. So what we got to do is find, oh, it's not bad actually. The, the way we do this, the trick to this, and again, this is why I stole, was stealing this from Gavin, is in order to make sure that she doesn't fringe out, we take our light meter, and we actually set it so I'm gonna go into flash mode. So the same way I shot set, set the ambient mode, I'm gonna to go to flash mode. I'm gonna dial in my 200 per second. ISO 400. This only does 250, but it's fine. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually meter from the back of our head towards the wall. If this exceeds 5.6, we know we're getting kickback. It's going past her. It's 5.6 and a half. So even though I want to leave the flash there to get it as white as possible, I'm gonna get fringing. So I have to turn it down half a stop, otherwise I'm going to get it. So, Or I could move her further from the wall, but I don't have space for that. Well, I guess I have a little space. Seth's right, I do have space. Yeah. All right. You've got to show some things proper sometimes, All Dan, right. you know. All right, come forward, please. Uh, a little closer. Okay, right there. All right, so that's the inverse square law in action. Five, six, exactly. Almost like we planned it. We actually come in here two or three days in advance and, and test these. We've been things. coming in here for ten years. <laughs> what are you kidding me? Like we've been doing this for like twelve years, man. All right. You got a better flow than the old space for light. 
<laughs> true. It used to be glitter on the floor. It used to drive us crazy. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. So again, the, the background is not particularly, this side's a little bit off, but we can see that now yeah. we're not getting as much fringe on her. All right. Good enough. So now, well, let's bring our hot light in. We don't have a whole lot of space here, but. Oh, you know what I can do, actually? Let me move this closer to you. Now, because I move this, did you do the math there? We're going to turn this up. Okay. Oh, I changed it from the remote. All right. We'll do another shot, make sure. There we go. Now the background's white. It's funny, now, I just want to point out, if you are new to doing commercial photography, you're going to get a client that's going to come to you and they're going to go, I just need a really easy shot. You shouldn't have to charge me very much. I just want a white background. It's like the hardest thing to do, to do correctly anyways. All right. Can't do a white background easily and, and have it be correct. Yeah, if you want to make money in headshots, let them do a white background. Yeah. Don't. But really, you should use two lights. Every dentist needs a white background for their LinkedIn. Yep. Every dentist. <laughs> it's by law. Yep. Okay. So... The thing about the white back, the proper way to do it is to use two lights. I just didn't feel like setting up another one because I was being lazy. Um, all right, so I'm just going to move this stuff. Uh, can you quickly just recap why 5.6 would take care of the fringing? Okay, so the rule is our lens is open at 5.6, right? So if the exposure that you have on your subject, which is going to be 5.6, is the same as or more closed down than the exposure at the back of her head, then more light is not coming past her head to your camera, which means it won't, won't fringe, you won't get a flare, basically. So it's not 5.6 in particular, it's just the exposure I had the camera set on. I guess I should make that clear. Okay, so this is a Nan light. For the, for the, for the guys yeah. in the chat saying mass tool for the win, if, if you've ever done mass volume commercial headshots, you don't have time for it. You're, you literally just have to get the white background and yep. get people through. You're talking about hundreds, if not close to a thousand headshots in a session. That's right. Okay. So again, like I said before, when you're using a hot light like this, oh, you want to kill <laughs> please. What you're going to want to do is start at full power. It's just easier. I'm going to do kind of a, a butterfly. Where are we? <laughs> Can you do one demo where you're not in the corner of the room for I a second? <laughs> I'm always in the corner, and Cadence is always going to be blind. All right. So, <laughs> okay, that's not bad. So, what I'm doing, can you pop the thing so I can? What do you want? Just so they can see through the camera. I'll light it. Yeah. All right, so this is what we're getting, right? So, again, if I change my ISO or my aperture, it will change my exposure. Uh, the, uh, for the flash, and we can't have the flash exposure go up because it'll exceed the 5.6 and we'll get fringing. So what we have to do is adjust our shutter speed, which is why, generally speaking, like what I was saying before, even though it wasn't the question that was asked, um, I, wouldn't, I would generally not use the hot light up front unless it was a powerful one. Like this is a 50th of a second, which means there's a chance that she's gonna move. So, you know, Cadence is pretty, pretty good at not moving, so. <laughs> well, and, the other thing, too, is you can, just, you can just tell your subject that. I mean, it's funny. We were talking about 4 by 5 cameras earlier. I've had people who have never been photographed with, oh, it's a little warm, huh? Uh, never been photographed with, like, big view cameras as up before. They'll stand still if you tell them. It's a different box, too. Don't different that. box. So we're getting a slightly color shift. Okay, so remember I mentioned before about, right? We have a bare head. We're getting a bit of a color shift. Guess what? This light can adjust. <laughs> Look at that. So what do you think it's a little magenta? I think it's warm. I feel like we're a little magenta. Actually, uh, geez. It's hard to tell. You know? So I'm going to, yeah, I think so, because look, I just went green. You want to do magenta? No, I want to drop that. I want to do green. Yeah, minus. So you want to do minus what? Yeah, my, it says 6.9 here, but I don't know if that's going to line up. But. So what I did there is I checked in Capture One. This is one reason why we tether, right? The tethering will allow us to adjust our, our, our image. I mean, you can adjust it after this fact, too, if like you get home and it's just bad. But. What you want to do is adjust it. Better? Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yeah. You want to adjust it if you can on set. Oh, that's see, name drop. That, because. That's better. Yeah, that's better. There you go. Hey. 
This is the, why we have color adjusting lights, right? We can adjust our color to match. This is a, a, an advantage here. It's a tiny bit warm, yeah. Also, what's that? Is that the, oh, it's a C-stand. There's a C-stand in the background. Better. There you go. So if you go... Yeah. Thing. All right. Wow, look at the difference in that skin. Look at that. Look at that. You got off a vacation on a cruise ship on the left, <laughs> and you're your traditional vampiric... <laughs> That's like uh, when we used to put like right, 80, yeah. 81C filters on our lens. <laughs> I mean, by eye, it's a little, it's still a little cold, but whatever. And okay. And we'll do this. And this is the thing. So you probably blink. Yeah. yeah. And now you're my ex-wife. <laughs> All right. So there you go. You can just, Seth's basically just adjusting the color temp and the magenta green shift. Okay. Because we're in what's called CCT mode. Right? That allows you to kind of make those adjustments. Now, again, what I would do in this situation, since it's a little bit funky, is I would definitely want to do a custom white balance just so I have it. <laughs> yeah, look at this, Maury. Look at this. <laughs> Maury's over. He doesn't need a microphone. All right. All right. So, bonus. Now, I know. Right, that's what Daniel's saying. They're asking why you're not using a color checker. That's what he's saying. He would normally do that, but we're doing a demo, guys. So. All right. So, it, now, okay, if you want to do a custom white balance, that's cool. But I would rather not have my images raw be that weird magenta green shift. I want to get it as close as possible with the light. Then this is going to ensure it's perfect. That's important. If you just say, well, I could just throw this up, it fixes it. Well, it doesn't really, the raw file is still the wrong color, right? We want the, the image as we take it to be as close as possible if we can get it, if we're trying to get exact color. So I'm gonna put this in front of uh, Cadence's grill. <laughs> hey. Okay, and then we're gonna come over here with the little dropper. We're gonna click on it. It's gonna adjust. That went a little warm for me. Uh, the white one looks better, I think. Okay, and then we're gonna take a shot. I can do it from here, actually. Oh, look at this. This is high tech. Wow. All, right. All right, Caden, smile. <laughs> Never tell anybody to smile. All right, well, oh, that's, that's a smile. Oh. <laughs> you know, weirdly, I like the one we adjusted better. Do you, I, but you know, the audience can decide. Close that's, though. I mean, I'm I, by by eye. I think I did all right. I think I did. Yeah. Oh. Hey, whoa, hey, what are you doing? You don't want to do that. Hey. I touched the thing. That's why you shouldn't give me the clicker. But, yeah, the actual correct correct with this feels a little too magenta for my taste, but again, it's a portrait. If it was a product shot, I would trust the color checker. checker. Although I wouldn't use this one, I'd use the actual X-ray. It, no, it's not focus. There you go. It's good though, I'll take it. Yeah. And what's nice here is that basically you've got it's keeping the, okay, so capture, I have capture one always set that it keeps the adjustment from the previous exposure. So now that we've done this, we can just keep shooting, right? If we later go, oh, do we really want to have that custom white balance? We can always remove it by going like that. You know, and that's where Seth set it. So see how it's not that different? That's what you want. You don't want your custom white balance to make the whole thing go whoosh in a crazy direction. That's too much work. Oh, thank you. It's like the same. It's, it's pretty close. I mean, that's. And if it's giving you a really hard time, just remember, throw it in black and white and convince them that's better. Don't do that. <laughs> Go back and watch the shooting for black and white demo. All right. So I know we went kind of fast. We did a lot of changes there. So let me just walk through this one more time and let me get some questions if you got any. If we are, yes, please. If we're trying to mix our lights, there's two things. I generally like to start with the flash exposure. We're going to set our flash speed, our shutter speed at the fastest shutter speed within the flash's normal range. We're going to get our ISO and our aperture to where we want it. Then we're gonna bring in our hot light or our constant light and we're gonna adjust our shutter speed down until we get a, a proper space. Now, you may run into times where you start doing that and all of a sudden you're at a fifth of a second and you're just like, that's not gonna fly. At that point, you can adjust your ISO, but remember when you do that, it's gonna adjust everything and you're gonna to have to go back and adjust your flash again. So that's why I said, let's just start at 400. Right? I didn't start at 100 like I normally do because I knew I would be too, way too slow on, a, slow on a shutter speed. That comes with some experience with your gear. Whatever hot lights you're using, practice with them, right? And you'll get a general idea. Okay, questions, thoughts, concerns? Nothing. So it's either super confusing or very, yes? I have a tip 
tangentially related question. Oh, no. Well, it's just a simple settings question, actually. I'm curious, are you in single or continuous? Am I in single or continuous, what, focus. shooting mode? Focus. Continuous. 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 With eye auto tracking, yes. I always set it on eyeball focus now because that was something I made fun of when it first came out. <laughs> You're like, well, I don't need that. I want manual focus. My friend. No, it's amazing. Yeah, I always leave it in auto with the eyeball tracking because I have portraits moving, especially in a demo. We're kind of moving around. Um, so yes, I usually leave it in auto. If I'm having trouble, much like TTL, I'll, use, I'll leave my flashes in TTL until it's not working for me. Then I'll switch to single, right? That's, that's when I do that kind of stuff. So that's a good question though because my general settings are TTL, I generally set my, my white balance at 5,000 and I generally have my autofocus continuous with eyeball. All of that changes if I'm having issues, right? You need to be able to use your camera fully manually if you run into problems. But if it's doing it for you, why not focus on your subject and your light? Someone's asking, is there any way to get rid of the shadow on the left side of her face? Or, you, or is that it? Yeah. Oh, well. Well, you could throw in a fill light or bounce it in or... I mean, yes, we, we could do that. I mean, probably, a, what do you think, a, a reflector might do that, actually. Pizza? What's that? The question is about the... Pizza box? A pizza box. What are you, from New York? <laughs> kind of lost you. Which light is the hot light? The hot light is the one he's touching right now, which is continuously on. A hot light means a light that's continuous. Right. Because back they in used the day, to be hot. all of them were hot. <laughs> now they're not so hot anymore. Yeah. Yes, just for terminology, this is a flash or a strobe, right? So if I'm, I may mix my terms sometimes if you're new to it. I'm glad people are asking. Don't just be like, what are you talking about? A light that flashes is often called a strobe, right? That's like what we used to call the studio ones. Constant lights are called constant lights, continuous light, hot light. Those are LEDs, right? So there's lots of different terms for stuff. It's good if you don't understand to ask. That's a good question. Um, do, yeah, just a reflector might do it. Let's see. Should we do silver? I'm going to do a silver one. Why not? Yeah. I mean, the other way to do it is just leave the overheads on. <laughs> yeah, I mostly got rid of it. Yeah. Right a little silver reflection action. Who needs eyebrows, right, Cadence? Right. <laughs> That's a perfect crop right there. <laughs> He's like, now sit on my lens head, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Cadence, Cadence charges by how much of the top of her head we get in the shot. <laughs> yeah. Like every, every quarter inch from the top of her eyes is, is more money. So. You have to pay royalties to our hairdresser yeah. every time, <laughs> so it's like... But, Okay, this is a good question. Uh, I can have lights back on before we take questions. So, do I make, if I'm taking a corporate headshot, do I chop it on their head or do I make a decision? No. So, it depends on what you're doing, right? If I'm shooting a corporate headshot, it's almost certainly going to be put on a website. And that means that they're going to want white space around the entire image because they're going to want everything to match. So, even though I might want to make a more cinematic or a cool crop, I'm not going to do that on a corporate job. I'm going to leave space because that's what you need to do. Right? If I leave space around now, it'll just look silly and not good. Yeah, when you're when you're doing jobs like that, the question is, is it commercial or is it creative, right? So you're kind of either going for a vibe and a look or you're going for a practicality that someone's using it for. I left a lot of space around. Well, right now there's a background, but I just wanted to... yeah, she looks even more bored. Too. Yeah, now she looks super bored. Actually it looks very sixties uh... <laughs> Yeah, you look like you're you're like a, that's a corporate portrait for Mad Men. Yeah, there you right go. There. there you go. Yeah, it's like it's like a so yes, it, it depends on the job. And actually, the, the perfect segue, the next demo I'm doing, which is on the 14th of March, March, wow, March already, is going to be on shooting to a layout. So shooting something commercially. How do we adjust our style, how we work, when we're giving a layout to shoot to? That's what I'm going to talk about. It's you shoot with a different mindset. It's a little bit of a different setup. So yeah, we'll talk about that a little more then. But but to answer your question, no, for a headshot, I would definitely not, especially a corporate headshot. I definitely would not crop off the top of their head. Yeah, and, and for everyone asking when is next one, as you said, March 14th, March but hit 14th. that QR code right here for the full events page. Yeah, the QR code. Schedule. Check it out. You can, if, you're, if you're here, you don't see the QR code in the air. It's only on the screen. <laughs> Any questions? Nothing. All right. We that's it. That All right. Well, I think. well, if you guys are going to WPI in Vegas, yep, stop by good. Adorama booth 1019, I think. Yeah, so I'll be there doing a demo and a bunch of other people, giveaways, stuff like that. If you're not going to Vegas, sorry, you're missing out. That's what it is. All right. There's a lot of good stuff in Vegas.
But, There's uh, a great taco place, Taco <laughs> Pepe. It's, check it out. Very good. Best tacos in Vegas. <laughs> but, but seriously, if you are going to Vegas for VPI, they Adorama is um, doing trade-in. So you can bring in your stuff for valuation, for exclusive deals and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. booth 1019 at WPPI. But for now, you'll be back in March 14th for the commercial layout demo. That's right. Yeah. Should we do a layout? March 14th. Mm -hmm. I'm Daniel Norton. This is Cadence Frank. Over here, we got Seth Miranda, last X witness. <laughs> the X is silent. All right. On that note, later, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Hit like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah.